welcome to this lecture uh, here we are going to discuss on arduino board and the software in the last two lectures we have given some introduction about the automation and through that introduction our main objective was to understand what is the system and what actually we want to control through these electronic devices in the second lecture we have just introduced with some of the basic electronic components because we are going to use these components in making the electronic circuits and or we can uh, how they actually look like what are their functions those things we have discussed now directly we are coming to this uh, Arduino project and how to do it what are the different components of it we are going to see so Arduino board before going to the Arduino board uh, we have already seen that ICs are of two kinds right non programmable IC and programmable IC this programmable ICs are called microcontroller now non programmable ICs we have already given an introduction like voltage regulator IC okay or motor age bridge ICs are there there are many non programmable ICs are there that means they are pre programmed we cannot uh, change that program whenever we need it those are pre programmed and used for specific purpose in case of programmable IC or the microcontroller what we do we can program it and we can use that particular IC for our use okay so here you can see uh, different kinds of um, microcontroller the Arduino there are basically two parts it having a hardware part another one software part. the hardware part it is basically a board which is called the Arduino board and Arduino board uh, can have again different types depending upon its number of pins ports and all that so here you can see Arduino Uno first one is Arduino Uno and this one is Arduino Mega or Arduino Nano Arduino Pro Mini okay there are different uh, sizes and number of input output ports or pins are different and that's why uh, they are of different sizes those are available but among them Arduino Uno is the most commonly used for different Arduino project so in this particular course we are trying to go with Arduino Uno now software part for all this board whether it is Uno or Mega or Nano or Pro Mini only one software and that is Arduino IDE so we are going to use this particular software to run this Arduino boards remember this is a freeware and we can easily download and install it so let us first see uh, what are the important components there in the Arduino Uno board so here you can see this long IC which is basically the microcontroller which is at mega 328 microcontroller these are only used in Arduino Uno board okay so this is the whole thing of this motherboard remember other things are simple nothing is there basically this is what is the microcontroller so everything is controlled here so whatever software programming we are going to do we have to upload here in this microcontroller and then this microcontroller will control all these pins accordingly then you see here is the usb plug okay so in this usb plug you can connect uh, with the computer to this board so that you can upload the programming that you do in the computer and then that program will be uploaded into the uh, microcontroller so here you can see usb a to b cable this is what is the usb a to b cable it is exactly similar that the cables used in printer right so one end will go here and the other end to the computer usb you can see here is external power supply external power supply may be required in Arduino 
and for that what we do the power supply should be DC so 7 to 12 volt DC SMPS through that we can give power supply or we can use this battery also to give power supply now if you see this is the Arduino board and let us see what are the different pins there here you can see that this is what is the reset button through which we can reset the microcontroller suppose we have used the microcontroller for a particular project that means for that project we have uploaded certain software here and now for another project we are going to use the same microcontroller so in that case what we can do we can reset it and again upload another programming here here you can see these are power pins here you can see this is 3.3 volt supply here it is a 5 volt supply there are two ground pins and one v in pins okay in v in you can put 7 to 12 volt power supply also now you see from 0 to 13 all these pins are can be used as digital pins all these are digital pins so how many digital pins are there total 0 to 13 total 14 digital pins are there and here specifically if you see some of the pins having this kind of sign which is called PWM pins PWM symbol is given in this way kind of analog kind of symbol is given right so 3 5 6 9 10 11 so these six pins are PWM pins or pulse width modulation pin now what are the purpose of pulse width modulation pin that we will see uh, when we will uh, do certain problems related to that but right now you just remember these are the pins but when pulse width modulation is not required you can always do all this as digital pins now you see pulse width modulation you have understood at least which are the pins having this pulse width modulation pins that you have understood now you see these are analog pins A0, A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5 these are analog pins okay now analog pins can also if the analog inputs are not there in that case we can also use these pins as digital pins also so in that case only thing that you have to remember the pins will be numbered after 13 so this one is a 13 pin this one will be then 14, 15, 16 like that in case of analog pins you remember in case of digital what happens in case of digital basically uh, high voltage that means the 5 volt suppose the 5 volt supply is there so 5 volt is corresponding to 1 and the ground that means 0 okay so high or low this kind of supply is there or out input or output it will take whereas in case of analog it is not specific from 0 to 5 it can take any value okay so it can vary and it can take any value between 0 to 5 this is what is the difference between analog and digital so digital is like a discrete either 1 or 0 and in case of analog it can take any continuous value from 0 to 5 but the idea uh, will be clear when you do uh, some project problems then things will be clear that how to use all these pins right now you just remember the name where these pins are located so uh, total how many number of uh, pins we can use as digital pins so here there are 14 number of pins and here there are 6 pins so total 20 pins we can use as digital pins ok and they are numbered like 0 1 2 3 2 13 then 14 15 16 17 18 19 so from 0 to 19 total 20 pins can be used as digital pins now coming to the arduino software if you see arduino software interface looks like this where you can see this region this is where the sketch name is given sketch means the file name okay sketch name means the file name sketch is a particular file where you have programmed something 
so sketch name you will get here then you see here it is the verify that means whether your program is correct or any error is there so verify so after adding the program or the code you have to click the verify to check whether any message is coming here if message is coming then in the text console you will find that at which location or which line uh, this particular error has occurred if there is no error signal coming then this is the upload button and after connecting arduino with the computer you can upload it to the microcontroller by simply clicking this button this is a new sketch opening button or this is the open of existing saved uh, uh, code or you can save through this button okay here you can see there is another button like a magnifying glass which is the serial monitor what is serial monitor and what is the use of it we will see later but right now you just see this is the code area where we write the program okay and here at the end you will find that which board you have connected with the computer and what is the um, com port in which com port that board is connected Now here you can see uh, the connection that how this Arduino is connected with the computer through the USB and we are writing the program and then you can easily upload it into the microcontroller. Now we will see that how the software is installed. So you have to go to the arduino.cc this particular official website of Arduino and from there you can easily download it so i'll show you by this video that how can we download it you just follow these steps and you can download so first you write arduino.cc in the address bar and Then you directly go to the Arduino official website. Then you go to the software. Here you can see the software. You click on it, a drop down will come, and from there you click on downloads. Now, if you gradually scroll down, you will find the latest Arduino updated. You can see at 27th April, and now you select your computer operating system. So now it is chosen Windows. And you will find that where you have to download that location you have to give you can download it to any location of your computer I have selected here the drive F within software I have a folder called software within that I have saved it you will find that a zip file will be downloaded here you can see a zip file is the downloaded is complete a zip file downloaded next step is you just unlock, uh, unzip this file click extract all
then it will be extracted into a folder the location can be changed also this extraction process may take some time depending upon your computer speed I just skip this video now after extraction you will find that particular folder will be created here you can see the folder now if you click on the folder then you will find the application application file and this application file you have to if you double click it it will simply open the audio so here you can see this is the interface now what you can do you can just take this application file into your desktop shortcut you can make it send to desktop shortcut so that you can access from the desktop itself so now you can see in the desktop it is there and you can directly access from here okay so now we have seen how to install the software but suppose we have to solve a particular problem for that we need this hardware like i mean to say we need this arduino board we need all these cables we need suppose led resistor and other components and then with the help of the id software that we have just installed we can make program and we can do a project but without all these hardwares we can do another thing that without buying all these things in an online platform with the help of a simulator where we get all these electronic components we we'll get where we get led we get resistor we get this arduino board everything we'll get and by connecting all these things and programming in id somehow it is possible to upload the program into the microcontroller and to see the result whether according to the instructions written in the program whether the things are working or not okay so that we are going to see in the next lecture thank you